Have a look at these two steam turbine builds. They're exactly the same in every way except for one way. And because of this one small difference, this one is producing 529 watts. And this one over here, well, right now it's producing nothing. So according to the math, this steam turbine ought to produce 567 watts. And this steam turbine should also produce 567 watts. The heat isn't escaping some way. It's getting deleted. And not by the steam turbine, clearly, or else it would be producing a lot more power. The difference between these two builds is that the steam pressure in this one is about 400 kilograms per tile, and the steam pressure in this one is about 2 kilograms per tile. When I first noticed this, I was incredibly confused. I talked to a bunch of guys on Reddit for a while. We tried a whole bunch of experiments in order to figure out where the heat is going and why this is working the way that it does. And then somebody hit on the root of the problem. The thought is, is that in this tile right here, when water falls out of the liquid vent and lands in that spot, it is still water for just a moment before it turns into steam and joins the rest of the steam. For the very short moment that water is occupying that tile, the steam that was in that tile gets displaced into the adjacent tiles, here and here. So the pressure in those tiles is much higher than the pressure in all of the tiles around them for just a moment. And also there's a temperature gradient because the water that's in this tile is relatively cold and the steam around it in these tiles is relatively hot. So because of the high pressure steam, you end up with this very high pressure gradient and some kind of temperature gradient. Somehow, as a result of that, a lot of heat is getting deleted. It's hard to know exactly what the dynamic is, and I don't know. It might be related to a thing people have been calling clamping, temperature clamping. The important thing is that phenomena is causing the problem. Clearly, one way you can mostly work around the problem is to just use low-pressure steam instead of high-pressure steam. I presume that's because you don't end up with such a high-pressure gradient. In a lot of the setups that I work on, you can't really tell that this is happening because just the, the source of heat is so powerful. If you're using a bunch of magma to drive a steam turbine, then you have enough heat to make up the difference for what's being deleted, and you can't really tell that you're losing a bunch of heat. You can easily keep the steam turbine running close to its maximum all the time anyway, but that doesn't mean that the heat isn't being deleted. There is still a tremendous amount of heat being deleted. For some of the setups that I do, I could definitely just switch to low pressure steam, but for the vast majority of them, low pressure steam isn't enough. I usually need to use a lot of steam so that there's enough heat capacity to keep the temperature stable. If I switch those things to low pressure steam, then I'm going to have a whole new box full of problems to deal with. So I experimented with a bunch of other strategies for dealing with that problem. And so let's start with this one. This one actually doesn't work very well, but it's kind of okay. I still have high pressure steam in the steam room. And the idea is I'll just make the water the same temperature as the steam when it comes out of the liquid vents. That way there's no temperature gradient in the room. It's at 416 watts, so it's definitely not as good as the low pressure steam. I'll show you the pipes real quick so you can see what I was thinking. The water comes out of the steam turbine up here. I break it up into one kilogram per second pipe so it doesn't break the pipe as it gets hot and run it through the steam room. It warms it up and then drops it out of the liquid vent onto the floor. So this keeps the temperature of the water when it's on the floor about the same temperature as the steam and reduces that temperature gradient. It's still not great and I have better solutions. Also, this one's kind of complicated. Uh, maybe don't go that way unless you have a good reason. If you put a bunch of temp shift plates in the steam room, that seems to make a big difference, although I don't really know why. It's definitely better than the last method, but it's still not great. It's up to 478 watts. The method that works the best is this one. If you, if you put the liquid vent into another liquid, like in this case I used petroleum, where the water comes out of the vent, there isn't any steam. This tile is occupied by petroleum. That petroleum moves over to the tile next to it and compresses itself into that tile while water is occupying the first tile. The water has a chance to evaporate into steam and I guess it moves up and then the petroleum moves back into the tile it was in in the first place. Of course you can't see any of that happening because it happens very quickly, but that changes the dynamic in some way that prevents the heat from getting deleted so much. The amount of power this steam turbine is generating is 555 watts and you'll notice that's even better than using low pressure steam. That one's generating 
getting 542 watts. It's not much better, but it is better. So this seems to be the best solution to solving the problem. I tried a variation of this trick with the petroleum right here. It's the, it's the same idea and it performs about the same. This steam turbine is making 552 watts. The point of it is that by having a slightly different configuration, you can prevent needing to have a puddle of petroleum all the way across the bottom of your steam room, and you can limit it to just one place. It's kind of hard to set up and get working properly, and so I'm not real keen on it. I think mostly this is the way I'm going to go in the future. I think this is a really important thing to know if you've played this game very much, and you'll get way more out of your steam turbines if you keep this bug in mind and look out for it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you for the next one. Oh, by the way, I've got a bunch of videos lined up, but I haven't had a chance to like do the recording and editing, so I think you can expect to see more from me pretty shortly, although I'm not exactly making any promises.